Good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome to the Osborne Clark session. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be talking to you about what makes a good lawyer. Um, my name's Zoe. I'm the Graduate Recruitment Manager at Osborne Clark, um, and today I'm joined by uh, three uh, wonderful panellists um, from the firm. Um, we shall get on to those introductions in just a moment. Um, what we're going to be covering with you today um, first of all, we're going to give you just a brief insight into Osborne Clark um, and Alex Gower, our, our partner and training principal, is going to run through that. Um, and then we're going to go straight into the panel Q&A, so really giving you an insight into what it means to be a successful lawyer and trainee and partner at Osborne Clark. Um, if you do have any questions for us throughout this session, please do feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, we've got some prepared questions that we're going to run through, but it'd be really great if you could come um, and pop some questions in for us as well so that we can make the session as dynamic as possible. Um, with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Alex um, to talk us through the About Osborne Clark information. Thanks, Zoe. Um, afternoon, everyone. I'm Alex, and as Zoe says, um, I'm a partner at Osborne Clark. I work in the construction team, um, uh, splitting my time between our Bristol and London offices. Um, and I'm also AC's training principal, which means that I look after our um, trainees um, and apprentices when um, they are with us, uh, work with Zoe very closely on the recruitment, um, and make sure that our trainees have a good experience. And um, at the moment, as you'd expect, planning very much for SQE and QW coming through. Um, before we get into Osborne Clark, I'll just introduce myself very briefly. Um, so I've been at OC since I was a trainee myself. Um, I did the um, vacation scheme in 2002 when I was studying at the end of my second year when I did biology and geography um, at university. Um, and I um, received a train, sorry, no, that would have been my third year, sorry getting confused in my years now but yeah end of my third year when I was studying biology and geography um, and then I did the vacation scheme um, and joined OC as a trainee in September 2004 um, qualifying into the construction team in um, September 2006. Um, in the construction team as you make it sort of gives it away. We do anything that involves building something. So contracts for building an asset of some description, um, which is one of the reasons I absolutely love it because I get to see something at the end of the contract I've been working on, whether it's a new residential building, whether it's commercial, leisure, bridges, um, wind farms, etc. So um, that is my day-to-day -day job. Um, but I've been a, a OC's training principal for the last 18 months. Um, and um, that's um, that, so that's me. Um, we'll get into a little bit more now about um, Osborne Clark. Um, we are an international law firm with offices throughout, um, three offices in the UK, Bristol, London and Thames Valley. Um, and then we've got three offices throughout Europe. Um, we've got three offices in the US where we don't practice US law, um, but we're the gateway for our US clients into the UK and Europe. Um, we have our Shanghai office, and then we've got a relationship firm in India, um, which is run by actually an ex-OC London partner, um, and that's BTG Legal. Um, move on to the next slide. Um, from a business perspective, we approach our work by looking at across key sectors. Um, the sectors are up on the um, slides now, um, but it, it's our, our way of understanding our clients' business. Um, you'll work within a service line, so construction um, is my service line, but um, I work predominantly in the uh, real estate and infrastructure sector, and also the energy and utility sector, um, with some crossover into the tech, particularly telecoms. So. Um, whilst you have your service line specialism, which is the area of law that you are a specialist in, at OC, we're encouraged to get involved with one or more of the key sectors that our clients work in, understanding our clients' businesses, et cetera. Um, overlying all this, we also have some transformations. Um, we look at the issues that are driving change and driving global change to, for, for our clients. Um, and at the moment, um, those three issues as we see them are digitalization, decarbonization and urban dynamics, basically the changing, um, the, how, the global issues that are changing how our clients' businesses are run. That could be um, an energy company looking at ways to 
um, increase the, the road to net zero. It could be a property company adapting to the ways that we live and we work in our cities, or it could be some new um, and tech initiative. Um, so we, we ha have those three um, transformations which sort of underpin as, or uh, the, the sectors. Um, moving on. Um, so where are we at the moment in terms of our recruitment process? Well, we've just kicked it off again in, in September, every autumn <laughs> comes around very quickly. So we're currently accepting applications for our vacation scheme um, with a deadline 15th January um, and the, the vacation scheme start date would be next summer, so some, summer 23. We're accepting the training contract applications, very similar deadline. Um, again, two years in advance, as would be um, expected for, for most law firms. Um, and then we have our insight scheme um, with a slightly later deadline and a, a, um, an earlier um, scheme. And that's predominantly aimed at um, students who are, uh, are not able yet to apply for the vacation scheme because they're maybe first year law students, etc. Um, so with I think no more ado I am going to hand over to Rav and Octavia to introduce themselves um, to, for the panel and then we'll get into the panel Q&A. Um, Rav if I could hand over to you first. Yeah sure uh, hi everyone my name's Rav I'm a senior associate in the London corporate team um, focusing on M&A and specifically tech and media M&A. Um, so a bit about me first and how I sort of you know came to be at OC um, so I read history and philosophy at the University of York. Um, I graduated in 2013, which makes me feel very old. Um, I then went on to law school at uh, Guildford, actually, the University of Law to study the GDL and the LPC. Um, I then did my training contract at a firm called Stevens and Bolton. Um, and then after a few years, moved on to DAC Beechcroft, where I did quite a lot of public um, and, and private M&A. And then I joined OC a year ago. So um, yeah, it's been a great year so far, really enjoying it. And um, I'll hand over to Octavia now to, uh, to, to yeah. Thanks, Rav. Um, so I am a third seat trainee. Uh, so I started just over a year ago now, and I'm currently sitting in the corporate team. Um, my first seat was in banking, then I went to commercial. Um, so back in a transactional seat. Um, so, a bit about me, I studied history of art at university. Um, I went to a very, very small university called the Courtauld Institute of Art. Um, so didn't have very much in the way of legal career knowledge at that point. Um, but sort of halfway through my degree, I realized that I wanted to move into the legal world. Um, so after I graduated, I got a job as an office assistant at a regional firm um, and then I was promoted to a paralegal a few months later um, so worked there for about a year and a half um, and then applied for the VAC scheme here at OC and got my training contract so I then went and studied the GDL and the LPC at BPP um, unfortunately the LPC was remote because it was the middle of COVID um, so I didn't get to experience the lovely LPC campus um, but yeah got all of that done and then as I said started a year ago Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I've just minimised the presentation there so that we can uh, see each other a little bit more clearly as we're going through um, the panel Q&A session. Um, so the first question um, that I had, and maybe we'll start with Alex for, for this one. Um, given your experience, what skills and attributes do you think make a good lawyer? Thanks, Zoe. Um, there's a few um, that I would list. Uh, firstly, attention to detail. I think that's something that we talk to our trainees about all the time, which Octavia can probably attest to, is that um, to be a good lawyer, you need to have really good attention to detail when you're looking at the documents, whether that could be something you're proofreading a document to make sure your drafting is right or whether you're analysing someone else's drafting. Um, it's often looking for the um, looking for the unknowns in that, looking to see where there could be something that could trip you up that may be in terms of particularly when you're analysing someone else's, how is that clause going to be interpreted? So you need to have really good attention to detail and, and, and pay really good attention to the, the words that on the page. What do they mean? Are the commas in the right place? What impact does that have on the drafting of, of a clause? Um, you also need to have a good ability to sort of digest and analyse information 
um, we receive an awful lot of information, um, as you'd expect. Our contracts are not short sometimes. Sometimes it's pleasantly surprising. They're only a few pages long. Other times they run into hundreds and hundreds of pages. Um, and your input on that could be relatively small, but you need to be able to analyze all that information, pull it together um, and work, um, work through it. Um, so you need to be able to work as a team. Um, I think that's very important. We do not work on our own. Um, I'd say 99% of the work that we are doing crosses multiple service lines. But you'll be working with colleagues in different teams. Um, and it's really important that you can work with them um, and um, work as a, a, a group to um, deliver the advice to the client. Um, and then finally, I suppose, as you become more senior, you'll become more specialist in what you're doing. And um, that's when it's quite important to have a, a real interest in what your clients are doing. So when you've chosen that sector, are you interested in what they do? It's a long time. For your, your career is a long, long career. You'll be working for a long time. You actually quite have to, have to really enjoy what you're doing. Um, and um, so you, you need that genuine interest in the area of law that you want to qualify into and, and you're going to specialise in long term. Thanks, Alex. Um, Rav, have you got anything to add into that? Thanks, Alex. That, that was quite comprehensive and took some of my points, which is good. <laughs> um, but it's, I think just touching on what you said about being a team player, I think that's super important. And particularly at a firm like Osborne Clark, where we really do put an emphasis on the people that we hire and the people that we work with. Um, and, you know, we really do, I think, universally uh, have people who are all very friendly, who are all very willing to get stuck in and have a very good attitude towards work. Um, and that's really important, particularly, you know, if you're working on a, just to take my own experience, if you're working on a corporate deal and it's quite late at night, having good people around you and people who are willing to put in, put in the effort is really good and it's really helpful. Um, and, and the other thing I would say is that when I was a trainee, um, a supervisor once said to me, all, all we really want from you is to be a safe pair of hands. Um, and I think that's something that I've taken with me throughout my career. And I, I often tell the trainees that now. Uh, I think if you're able to show that you can grasp legal concepts and you understand the instructions that we're giving, you're then able to build confidence and we're going to be able to give you more work to do. And therefore, you're going to be able to learn more. Um, so really, I think it's just about getting stuck in, having a good attitude and then just being very careful. The things which Alex mentioned, like attention to detail, all of that super important stuff, which you won't just have to, you know, use as a trainee, but it'll be throughout your career and even when you're a partner. Thanks, Rav. And then Octavia, um, I don't know if any of those um, skills and attributes that Rav and Alex have um put forward have come as a surprise you know how when you were doing your research before becoming a trainee solicitor how, have you found that what you thought you'd need um, is different to the kind of skills that you do need as a trainee or as a lawyer or have they pretty much married up anything unsurprising there I don't think there was anything unsurprising I think there were some skills which I hadn't realised maybe how important they would be or how sometimes challenging they would be. Um, so one was sort of time management and prioritisation of tasks. And I knew that would be important, but it's actually quite difficult sometimes to to manage, um, you know, quite particularly for in a busy department and in a busy time, you'll be working for any number of people and you'll be getting tasks sent over to you with deadlines and working out how to manage all of that making sure that you are communicating properly with the people that are giving you the tasks and making sure you're meeting those deadlines um it is it was quite difficult initially and i think communication there was really really important really understanding how long a task would take or expected to take um you know what the deadline was was there any leeway with that how urgent was the task all of these things were really important to kind of ascertain at the beginning um and i think obviously the more as i've gone through my training contract the better i am at, at getting used to that and and making sure that i'm sort of communicating if there's any sort of issue with the any possible issue with the deadline so i think yeah there were there were some things which on paper you know are going to happen but when you're actually doing it in practice it's it can be a bit harder to to master um 
but I think I had the advantage of being an office assistant in a law firm and paralegaling for a little bit so I sort of had an insight as to what it would be like so it wasn't a total shock when I <laughs> when I started. Great um, and uh, Rav and Alex, uh, Rav I don't know if you want to kick off on this one, how do you support trainees within your team to make sure that they're successful? Um, yeah so, so I suppose there are, there are two elements of this, there is the structure that um, the firm has in place so that we have regular catch-ups with the trainees and we, we tend to do them every week so we do them on a Friday just to talk about any concerns that they might have or any questions that have come up in in the stuff that they've been working on um, and we also have various training which we can offer them and um, you know interim and, and end of seat reviews. Um, I think what I quite like to do is to encourage a very open dialogue between myself and the trainee and so that's not confined to just a Friday or at a review. Um, we are talking constantly um, in, in the world that we live in now everyone is connected all the time particularly over Teams um, and so any issues that she might have or that I want to discuss with her we can do it quite openly um, but also it's about I think encouraging um, encouraging them to take chances and to get stuck in with work which they might not be comfortable with because we're very much a, a firm where you can try and do things and you don't have to get it right the first time. Uh, there is there is no expectation of that, but all we want is for people to learn because that is how you learn by getting stuff wrong, actually, because you, you probably won't do it again. Um, so we very much try and do that um, within the team. And I think that's the same for other teams as well. Great. And Alex, coming to you. Yeah, so um, RAVS covers a lot of what, what we do, um, but just say every trainee um, in every seat will have a, a trainee supervisor and they'll have a supervising partner as well. Um, so a lot of the day-to-day -day, um, one-to-ones will be with the trainee supervisor, but you'll also have um, regular sessions with your supervising partner within that team. Um, and beyond the team, we have our trainee and apprenticeship leadership group or T-A-L-G for short, because that is a bit of a mouthful. Um, and um, that's the, the group that, that I head up as training principal. And on that, we have um, location partners in each of the three locations. So we have three partners in Bristol, we have two in Reading and a three in London. Um, and they are our trainee and apprentice um, location partners, which basically means they, they check in on a pastoral basis with all our trainees on a regular basis. Um, there's someone outside of the team that you're working on in, in day to day that you can go to that you can have a chat to um sort of metaphorically the door is always open we don't have any doors on our offices so um th th they are always open but um uh, yeah th th it just gives you that extra layer of someone who isn't um in your team that if you wanted to discuss something you had any concerns then then you can go to them and we also have our future lawyer team um which is the the, the team who look after our trainees with um while they're with us from a um seat rotation perspective they help with any questions on the psc they're planning our sqe qwe at the moment um, and they do a lot of those those day-to-day -day conversations so there are a lot of different people um at different um points in the firm to to offer support. Thanks, Alex. And then Octavia, coming to you because you're living the trainee experience at the moment. Um, what other training is available to you as a trainee so that you feel that once you come to qualification that you're really set up to succeed? So every seat we have um, so at the beginning of the seat and then also throughout the seat, we have specified sort of training in relation to that department. Um, so that's really helpful because your sort of typical trainee tasks obviously vary um, sometimes quite considerably between seats. So just having that initial few training sessions um, to really help you know what kind of work the team does, who everyone is, where you can go to look at precedents, where you can look to find sort of extra knowledge is really important. Um, but they run also throughout the whole of the seat as well. So you're kind of constantly being fed information and it, it really helps because you sort of you start gathering knowledge as you're going through your seat just by the tasks that you're doing. And then you have these kind of extra sessions throughout, which just helps sort of encourage that and advance that knowledge. Um, we also have the PSC course as well, which is sort of externally run 
and that focuses much more on sort of the trainee skills so we've got our advocacy and communications one coming up in the next few weeks um, and they're always really good because you sort of get together as a trainee group and um, and all go through those days together um, there's also just there's, there's so much in the way of training there's you can sort of sign up to um, sort of the transformations in different sector groups so you can have sort of you can attend like webinars in relation to um, you know the urban dynamic stuff that's going on or whatever you're interested in um, so there's always something going on um, and there's always ways that you can develop your knowledge and I think having these regular catch-ups with your supervisor as well has been so helpful because it's it helps you sort of identify if there are any gaps in your knowledge or identify elements which you've not sort of done so far that you'd like to get involved with and they're so good at helping you navigate that and know where to go know who to speak to um, so you're very very well supported um, in the as a trainee fab fab um, so moving on to uh, we focused a bit on, on trainees so far is there a difference between the skills that trainees need and qualified lawyers need um, Alex perhaps going to you to start this one yeah I'd say um, yes there is but it's um, this doesn't sound corny it's an evolution rather than a rev revolutionary change in the skills you need you're building on the skills that you um, develop as a trainee throughout your career you're constantly building on the skills um, and, and some of those skills and we've talked about them they underpin everything we do um, you need need to have good attention to detail throughout your career you need to be able to work as part of a team um, it's taken as a given as the more senior you get that you are a technically excellent lawyer because you wouldn't be progressing and become more senior if you weren't technically good um, but then you develop more skills so as you become more senior you develop different skills you'd be supervised more so as a trainee rightly so you won't be supervising people you might be working as part of a te trainee team but you need to do it first before you can supervise someone else doing a task um, but then as you become um, qualified and as, as certainly as you move um, associate you'll start working with our trainees start supervising the work and you'll build you'll build on that throughout um, and then as you become more senior, you will be probably supervising more junior but qualified members of the team and have a, a bigger team to supervise. Um, you'll also be building on what you've done in terms of learning your people management skills. So um, as, as you become more senior, you will be line managing a team. You'll be working together. Um, and so you'll, 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 you'll be using the skills that you've built up probably from being a trainee supervisor yourself and supervising more junior members of the team to start um, managing a team. Um, and then there's things that naturally, as you become more senior, that you'll get more involved in. You'll become more aware of financial management. Um, as a trainee, you'll start looking at fee quotes, you'll start looking at billing and you'll understand that. But as you become more senior, you have to get more involved in how matters are profitable. How does it, the law firm is a business? How does a business make money? Um, how do we keep um, keep the lights on uh, um, and, and keep everyone's salaries being paid, etc. So you, th those are different skills that you pick up that aren't really legal skills because you're just you're learning bits of the law um, all the time because the law is changing. But they're they're additional skills that you will pick up as you um, become more senior. Yeah, and I think it's really important to highlight those to people um, at, at the outset, because quite often we're asked, you know, oh, why are you why are you focusing so much on commercial awareness and business awareness? But, you know, you have to appreciate that it's not, you know, the trainee role is absolutely what people are applying for now. But that's at the very start of a long career that, that evolves and develops over time. So having that wider business appreciation is really important. Um, Rab, just coming to you, um, picking up on some of those points that Alex has mentioned as, as the role has evolved as you go through your career, how does the firm support you? Um, how do you go about developing those extra skills that you need to be able to deliver profitable fee quotes and, you know, do business development and, and lots of other activities as well? Yeah, so it's a really good question. Um, I think we've, Octavia's mentioned that we have a number of training sessions which are open to not only trainees, but at the various levels. So the way that it works at OC is um, it's trainee associate, senior associate, associate director, and then um, legal director and partner, um, or perhaps associate director straight to partner. 
but at each of those levels um, there are targeted training sessions for lawyers in those areas to work on different things like um, billing management like business development like commercial awareness um, and they're all really helpful sessions to go to and actually to be honest there are so many sessions that we offer that some it, it is sometimes difficult to go to all of them but they can be very very useful um, at least for me before I joined Osborne Clark I didn't have uh, too much experience of actually running my own matters in terms of billing and looking after the work in progress. Um, I attended some really good sessions with the finance team and effectively, you know, that was something which they offer to all new senior associates. Um, and we all went through the same process and then eventually it just becomes a matter of course, you're doing it all the time. Uh, and so it's like you've, you know, you've always done it. So really it's just a, a, a case of making the most of those training sessions that are on offer. Um, and also not worrying too much. I think, you know, just looking at the transition between training at NQ and then even as associate, senior associate and so on, um, nobody's expecting you to know absolutely everything overnight. And it is just a gradual progression. Um, I do remember when I became an NQ, I, there, there was a bit of panic and I felt like it was quite a steep learning curve um, because I thought oh, actually on some of the stuff, the buck stops with me. And that is the case you know, as you as you go forward in your career, you will be the last line of defense before it goes to a client. Um, so it's always good as a, I think, a trainee to think, OK, let's pretend that this document isn't going to be read by a senior solicitor. So what do I now have to do to get it into a shape where it could just go to a client? Because if you get into that thinking, then I think the, the transition becomes slightly easier. Uh, but yeah, going back to your question, lots of training on offer. Um, and so, you you know, you are very supported throughout your career. Fantastic. Thanks, Rav. Um, now moving into kind of hints and tips for um, the people that are listening today. Um, are there any practical things that you can advise um, the attendees on how they can go about starting to develop the skills that they need to be a successful lawyer? Um, perhaps like Octavia, if we come to you first. Yeah, I mean, I think the things that I was trying to do when I was at university um, was trying to get involved in sort of lots of different committees um, and groups and not necessarily legal ones, but having an opportunity to maybe take the lead on a project or sort of run an event or something. So something where, you know, you've got you're building those communication skills, you're building those time management skills because they are all incredibly transferable skills, um, but they're really important to be able to talk about specific experiences where you have developed those and maybe the problems that you had that cropped up and how you overcame them. Um, and I think also just showing that you can balance, you know, university studies alongside these committees is always really great for time management. Um, so I'd say sort of, and also it just means you meet lots of other people. And I think that's so good. It's networking at the end of the day. And, and that's how you sort of progress in in every sort of aspect of life meeting new people learning new things um so i'd say definitely sort of committees extracurricular activities i would also say trying to speak to as many people in the legal profession as possible um i think if you've if you're not at the point where you're you know if you've not if you're not sort of having legal work experience just having those conversations with people in the profession is a really good way to find out what it's like working at that firm or what it's like working in corporate or what it's like working in family law um so reaching out to people and just asking questions and, and working out whether you know if, is that the kind of firm you want to work in or do you want to work it's a good way of working out whether you want to maybe work for private individuals or for big corporations and and those sorts of things which are really important when it comes to honing those applications for the vacation schemes and training contracts um so i think yeah probably those two things were the things i tried to really focus on when i was um at university great thanks octavia um alex shall we come to you yeah, I think Octavia's covered that really well. Um, I think the the, uh, the reaching out to different people and speaking to different people in a range of different law firms is great. Um, and it does it, I think it's really important that you narrow down the sort of firm that you want to work in. Um, so you don't have to go and do tons of vacation schemes at all the magic circle firms or all the, the, the firms in the city you want to work in. Um, 
going to a local high street firm and shadowing someone for a couple of days to understand how that works, um, that, that firm works, how their different departments work, how they deal with their clients, you're picking up invaluable um, knowledge by doing that. Um, so it's, it's, you shouldn't feel that you only have to do the, the formal schemes that um, law firms offer, but definitely reaching out, uh, meeting as many people as possible and I think just use uh, working as a team. So Octavia's given some really good examples of running events, but it could be working at your sports teams or you could be um, doing a part time job. I mean, I, I worked part time at Tesco's all throughout university and I was working as part of a team. Um, and and that's, that's great. That, that sort of thing gives you something to talk about when you're doing your interviews in terms of um, how, how, you, how you've worked with others. So it doesn't have to be legal. Um, we um, everyone in legal recruitment understands how competitive it is to get onto different schemes at different times and actually there's so as Octavia put perfectly there's so many transferable skills that you'll be picking up um, and I think it's really important to develop those. Great thanks Alex and then Rav I don't know if you've got anything to add into that. Um, no that was covered very well I think the, the only thing that I would add is when applying for firms, I think it's always very tempting to apply for as many as you can and then hope for the best. Um, the, the issue with that, I think, is that law firms are quite good at identifying those sort of generic applications. Um, so when you are applying to a firm, make sure you do do your research. Also make sure it's the right firm for you. So um, I, it, it, it's easy to say now, I think a few years into my career and when you were a a university student applying for a training contract you desperately want to get it but you should try and see those interviews and those application processes as two-way things because really you're going to be spending at least two years of your time working at a law firm and with those people and so you need need to make sure it's the right law firm for you and law firms really range you know in their size in their culture um in terms of the, the kind of clients that they work for and so you really need to try and understand what what's important to you and where do you see yourself at least for two years if not longer and take that into your into your interview processes and, and your applications bro well, thanks and actually i'm going to deviate from our kind of question script because a couple of the questions that have been coming through on the chat seem to um, are asking about OC's culture and what it is that makes us different um, to other firms so that was quite a nice a neat little uh, way that you, you ended up there Rav talking about our culture um, so um, I'll open this up to, to any of you really what what is it about the firm that really stands out to you um, and why do you think we're different? I'll, I'll start. I've been here the longest, so I'll start. Um, so what appealed to me when I first applied to OC is how open and approachable and welcoming everyone was. And that was from the very first day that I turned up um, very nervous, um, a science background, knowing nothing about the law whatsoever and going to an assessment centre thinking, what on earth am I doing here? Um, but everyone puts you at ease. Everyone wants to talk to you. And, and that, that I can honestly say in the 18 years that I have been here, it's still the same. People are really welcoming and it's a it's a very approachable firm. And I think as you become more senior, you, you, you still really appreciate that. Um, we have people join us from other law firms at partner level or below partner level. Um, and the culture is not the same. It's much more eat what you kill. It's very pointy elbow. This is mine. This is my client. Um, you'll, you'll hear people at OC talk about this is our client. This is an OC client and we're part of a team working together for that client. Um, and personally, I think that's really important. Um, you've uh, you shouldn't feel like you're watching your back every day at work that you can't take a holiday because someone might pinch a client while you've gone on holiday because you, you left a matter with them to see to look after for you um but it, it's a very collegiate atmosphere so i, I would start there <laughs> lots of nodding going on there um, <laughs> yeah i i just I, I completely agree with all of that and that's exactly one of the reasons why i wanted to work here and i think from a trainee perspective one one thing that's really nice is 
as Rav has alluded to earlier, you do make mistakes and that is the best way to learn. And I've never felt worried about making a mistake and telling the supervising lawyer. And I think that's a huge, huge thing. And I know friends at other firms have said it doesn't always feel like that. It always feels sometimes feels a bit scary telling their supervisor. But actually, I've always thought if I realise I've made a mistake in a document, I can quickly message them and say, really sorry, I've just noticed that, you know, I, I think I've made this mistake. And it's always been, OK, that's fine. No problem. Let's go through it. Let's have a look. Should we work, work it out? And I think that's such an important thing because inevitably you are going to make mistakes sometimes. You really try not to, but unfortunately we are all human. It does sometimes happen. And having that support, knowing that you're not going to be shouted at and knowing that you're going to be met with kindness and understanding, I think is such a crucial thing. Um, and yeah, that, that's something that obviously I didn't really know in much detail before I started, but it's something that I was so grateful that was the case um, when I started. Thanks, Octavia. And then Rav. Yeah, so look, I'm not going to tell you that we're really nice people because it, I think it's pretty, you know, we, 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 we've done that and that's true. Um, but I think, you know, when I was looking at what firm I wanted to join, I was looking for a very ambitious firm, a firm which did very good quality work and had high quality clients. And that's what we do at OC. We've grown incredibly over the last 10 years. And last year we had a fantastic year um, and we're continuing to do that. And the, the magic, I think, is that you're able to grow and have ever demanding clients, but also retain that culture that's so important to OC. And I think we're doing a really good job of it. Um, but, you know, it's it's certainly a firm which is going in places. It's, it's it's an extremely good firm. We do lots of really good work. I can only speak for corporate in particular, but we do some very high value deals um, across our private equity, capital markets and corporate sectors. Um, and particularly the clients that I work for in the tech sector, um, that they're extremely good and well known. And I think that's the case for a lot of a lot of our departments in the firm. So. It's very ambitious. We do good work, but I think we also have a really good culture. Great, thanks. Um, sticking with um, OC as a theme, um, would you like to give us one of your personal highlights from your time at OC? I'm not going to pick on anyone to start. Whoever wants to briefly uh, come forward can. I, I suspect we might all say the same thing for the, the summer party. Um, which was <laughs> extremely good, um, uh, and it was uh, it, it was in a in a forest just outside of Reading, and um, we had a Grammy award winning DJ, and it was on from like 2 p.m. until midnight, and it was just awesome to see everyone there from different offices, partners in shorts, dancing in the rain, and it was it was really cool. It was really good. Yeah, I would have to agree that was that was a, a big highlight of the year. Um, that was really fun. And from the trainee perspective, being able to see all of the other trainees from the different offices um, and obviously everyone else from the other offices, it, it was brilliant. Um, I think another one of my highlights, which isn't a specific event, but it's sort of more of a general one, um, is the fact that I've been able to get involved in some really interesting high profile work, but at the same time, I've been really supported to get involved in pro bono initiatives and CSR days and, um, you know, DNI groups and committees and been able to participate in those events. And I sort of didn't know whether when you start your training contract, you're sort of so busy that you can't ever do these things, but there's actually a really nice balance to be able to get involved in all the great work, but still pick up all of those other sort of extracurricular things as they as it as you could say. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's been really, really a real highlight for me. Um, so from my perspective, I would agree the summer party was awesome this year, absolutely brilliant. Um, and um, credit to our events team who pull these things out of the bag and do an amazing job. Um, uh, having been here a while, there's been a number of highlights. I think a personal achievement highlight would probably be when I was appointed training principal. Um, as I was a relatively junior partner at that point, I'd only been a partner for a, a couple of, well, two or three years. Um, and I was taking over from a very senior experienced partner who'd been training principal for six years before that and had done an amazing job. Um, and it, 
from a personal perspective, it was a real um, validation and put uh, of the fact that the firm believed in me, believed that I could do that role, um, and were supporting me and um, the ideas that I had to sort of take it forward. So. Um, I think what that demonstrates is that the firm's really supportive of people who want to put themselves forward for these for different things. And um, we have we spend a lot of time on our fee earning work, um, but we all have discretionary time and you're supported to do with that discretionary time um, different initiatives. And for me, one of the key um, non non fee earning, non client, non client relationship bits I do is, is the um, training principle. Um, other people like Octavia would say it's, it's pro bono or they're heavily involved in, in different CSR initiatives. It could be more of a sector, more of an industry thing that you're involved in. Um, but I think actually it's a real strength that people can um, use um, use their skills and use what they're, they're good at in different ways. Um, so yeah, that was probably a personal highlight, but yeah, looking forward to next year's summer party as well, see if they can top this year's. <laughs> So the bar was most definitely set, wasn't it, for uh, future parties after last year. Um, so finally, with the, the questions that we have uh, pre-prepared, um, what was the best piece of advice that you were given when you were a trainee? Um, and if you were given any bad advice, um, what was the worst piece of advice that you were given? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. So I think the best advice I was given was that it's it's not about finishing first, but it's about getting it right. Um, and I think something which, you know, often we're all guilty of when we start our careers is that we think um, if we get the work back very quickly and we can show that we've done it in 15 minutes, that's great. And, we you know, we, we're doing really well. Um, unfortunately, if you're able to do it in 15 minutes, it often mean, means that you may have missed something. Um, and so it's really difficult, I think, to just acknowledge that actually I need to take a bit longer and it's better for the person who's reviewing my work if they know that actually I've taken the time, the care to look at the work for an hour and given it back to them and said, look, I've had a really thorough read of this. Because frankly, every time I look at a document that I've drafted, I always find something um, because we're not robots. We always find something. Um, but you just need to give yourself the time. So, so don't rush and, and take your time with work. Um, piece, a good piece of advice I was given, and I, I give it to all our, my trainees now, is um, when you're given a task or when something comes in, think about it and form an opinion on it yourself. So it could be that you're working closely with someone else. Um, good example in our team is we're quite often negotiating the terms of a, a, an appointment or a building contract. Um, you'll be working very closely with a, as a trainee with someone else on that, but you'll be copied in when the response comes back. Um, we're not expecting our trainees to, to go back without talking to anyone and checking having their work checked, but actually when that comes in, think about it and um, say to your supervisor, um, I'll take a first look at this and then can we sit down and discuss it? But actually think about what you think the answer should be. We don't expect you to get it right. Um, there, there will be definitely points for discussion, definitely learning points. But if you've had a think about it rather than waiting to be spoon fed the answer or someone to tell you where to look for the answer, um, that's really important. Um, I do have a worse piece of advice that I was given, Zoe. Um, and um, that was the mythical third seat is the most important seat. So um, I absolutely remember the second year trainees when I was a first year, you must do the seat you want to qualify into as your third seat. If you don't get it, it's the end of the world. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do if I don't get the seat that I really want? And I qualified into my first seat. So rubbish. Um, so that was the worst piece of advice that I was given. And I think actually we've, we've talked about this as a TALG group many times and I think when we were in the room about one person out of the nine partners sat around the table had done ended up in the place they qualified um, in their third seat some people had ended up in seats they qualifying into places they hadn't really done a direct seat in so um, that was probably the, the, the worst <laughs> yeah I, I remember when I used to do the trainee seat moves that that's quite a common misconception so um yeah, we're all kind of chuckling away there. Um, Octavia, how about you? Um, actually, 
the sort of best piece is quite similar to Alex's. It's I was always told that you know trainees aren't expected to know everything. Like you're not expected to know everything from, from day one. Um, but when you do get stuck or you are on you aren't a hundred percent sure try and find the answer yourself try and look into it have a think about it maybe come up with sort of some possible solutions or you know some ideas of what you think it could be don't go straight to the person who's giving you the work and say i don't understand it can you go through it with me try and have that kind of process with yourself first and and there's also links back to Ra's point about it don't it's not if you've kind of come up with something in five minutes and it's wrong it doesn't it doesn't really benefit anyone take that time if you can obviously there are times when it's a bit more time pressured but where you can take that time to sort of really think about it um try and work it out yourself a little bit and then if you're still stuck ask questions um and you can't you know everyone's so open to answering questions for you so you can have those conversations but i think it always looks good if you've tried to work work it out yourself first um and then my bit of bad advice was when someone said to just apply to as many training contracts as you possibly could in that application cycle and i just think if you had all the time in the world then by all means but most of us don't most of us are at university whilst we're applying or we're working whilst we're applying um and the amount of time that actually it does take to do the research and to put your application together to proofread it to make sure you're happy with it it's a very time consuming thing so just doing a scattergun approach and applying to as many as possible i think often doesn't get you the results but taking that time on each individual application and really thinking about why it is you want to work at that law firm why do you think you would be a good match for that law firm really helps and i think it, it's really clear on the application when it's being read by the law firm so yeah that was my bit of bad advice <laughs> that you've managed to turn into a really good piece of good advice <laughs> um, because, you know, we are looking for people who have got that deep understanding of the firm and, and that genuine interest and commitment to Osborne Clark during the application process. Um, so you can't just bash out an application form in an hour and, and think that it's going to be successful. Of course, everybody knows somebody who's been in that position, um, but you, I think you sometimes have to take that advice with a with a pinch of salt and definitely focus in on, you know, what it is that is really motivating you to apply for that particular firm. Um, I've had a look through the questions and there are some um, kind of common themes, um, one of them being around developing commercial awareness. Um, so it's quite a common question that we get asked at events is how can students um, and future lawyers develop their commercial awareness? So I don't know if anyone's got any tips that they'd be able to share. Um, I, th I think it, it sounds really simple, but just watch the news, keep up to date with what's going on in the world, um, read the paper and try and start to form your opinion on things. It's quite a, it's quite a hard skill to do. And, you know, I think we all struggle with it, but you've got to try and be, try and be subjective and try and look at things and think, okay, what does that mean for this? Um, if you take the budget a couple of weeks ago and you try and make connections with what impact that budget has on the business world and the impact it will have on the economy and what law firms do. And I think in these interviews, law firms aren't looking for the right answer. They're just looking at your logic and thinking how you get from A to B. Um, so just keep keep reading the news, um, stay up to date with those kind of things. And, you know, if you're a university, you can join societies which will will help, help with, with this kind of stuff. I used to um, debate a lot and actually I think I I ended up looking at looking into things which I would never usually do if I hadn't been debating so um, that that's quite a good thing for me really yeah yeah I think also um, sort of looking at what is going on in your life whether you're working at kind of yeah you know, I worked at John Lewis for a bit when I was at university and it was sort of thinking, how does this business work? What are the challenges this business faces? What are the opportunities it has? Um, how am I sort of contributing to those opportunities? How am I helping that business tick over? And then, as Rav said, like, what are the implications of what's going on in the world? How is that affecting 
this business that I'm working for. And obviously, if you're working in a company, you're probably going to some team meetings and stuff. You'll be listening to maybe your targets for the week and that sort of thing. Are the targets going down because the economy's, you know, really suffering and retail's going down? And sort of really trying to think about how what is going on in the world, how, what how what is going on affects businesses and then if what that means lawyers have to do to help them so it's kind of that sort of quite cyclical um, thought process but I think sometimes if you do have a part-time job it is quite useful to sort of take a step back and look into that company and I think it's also a really good way to show your commercial awareness when you attend um, interviews so yeah I think probably that would be my advice. I haven't really got anything more to add. I think those are two excellent answers and give you some really good um, indications. Um, and I think it's just being aware of what's happening in the world and, and, and making those connections. Um, I think that's really important. So yeah, I don't really have anything to add. Fab, thanks. Um, and then the other questions that I've seen focus around whether non-law students can be lawyers. Um, which given a, a good, a healthy number of our panel studied non-law topics at university, um, hopefully shows that uh, that is absolutely possible. Um, Octavia, I don't know if you want to talk through your route just as a, a reminder again of, of what courses it is that people need to do and, and when they can apply. Yeah, so um, obviously you don't have to study law at university, um, but what you do have to do if you haven't studied law is, I think it's now the PGDL. Um, I did the GDL, but I think it has now changed to the PGDL. Um, and it's a year long course. Um, it's quite intense, um, but it's really well run, really interesting. Um, and you do it with everyone else who's obviously never studied law as well. So you're with a good crowd of people to get you through it. Um, and I actually really love the fact that I didn't study law at university. Um, it meant that I studied something that I was really, really interested in and wanted to study, and then still got to essentially do a law degree afterwards, um, albeit a bit more condensed. Um, so yeah, don't let that stop you. I think the only thing that, uh, makes it different is you can't apply until your final year of university I think if you've if you studied non-law um but that's I think the only difference but yeah I had a great time studying a non-law degree and if it's if there is a degree that you're interested in even if you know later on you want to go into law then I think because there is the option to do the PGDL why not do something that you know you do know that you'd really like to study for three years Fab. Um, and then with just a few minutes left, there, there was one interesting question in the chat about how is it possible to know which firm is the right firm from, for you? Um, so the question particularly relates to just reading materials um, online. Um, but I don't know if you want to each give kind of top tip um, to really get to know firms. I mean, mine would be get to events so even coming along to webinars like this you can tell the personality of a firm and and whether you want to work with the people that are speaking on the panel um, or who are at the event representing the firm um, you can get a really good feel for what it would be like to work within that organization so I think it's really important to to go along to events so that you can get a feel um, for the firm um, but I don't know if anyone's got anything else to add. The, the only other thing I would add is that um, don't underestimate the resources online. So there's a huge amount on um, websites for these firms. And, you know, everything which really I think OC wants to depict in the market is on our website. And I think that's very clear. And it's the same for a lot of other firms. Um, but there are also some like unconventional ways in which you can research firms. I know that I had a I knew someone at um, Clifford Chance when they were training and they did a, a trainee blog and they put it on YouTube and I think it might still be there. And so there are things which you can, you know, just online, there are things which you can search, whether it's legal directories, firms, websites, or even YouTube podcasts um, to just try and get as much information as you can about these firms. Yeah, I also think that there's 
obviously so many law firms um, and they're all different sizes. They all have different types of clients. They all do different types of work. So I think almost take it back to the basics and think, do I, from my experience so far, do I think I want to be working with individuals in a personal capacity or do I do I want to be working for companies and big corporations? Because um, that kind of separates firms out quite well you know there are lots of firms that do a lot of family law and private client and um, you know residential property and those sorts of things where you are acting for people in their personal lives and that's very different to acting for companies quite a lot of the time so sort of thinking about what area you think you'd be most interested in sort of whittles down you know a certain number of firms and then one thing that was quite important to me was looking at how many trainees would be in each intake did I want to be one of 100 or did I want to be one of 10 or, you know, where the offices are? There's lots of sort of things that actually you probably know the answer to without even looking at the firm yet. And then once you've sort of worked out the type of firm you want to be in, you can then do a deeper dive into each of those firms that sort of fit with your criteria. Um, and another thing. Uh, as Ralph said, YouTube, there are so many videos on YouTube that are produced by firms. Um, and quite a lot of the time they are uh, sort of educational or, you know, they're not necessarily for train, not for future sort of trainees, but it gives you an idea of what people are like and what, what kind of work that they do, what sort of things they're talking about. Um, so I use YouTube quite a lot to sort of look at firms and, and sort of that as a way to find out a bit more. I think um, those are really, really good um, ideas. Um, I, I think as well, it's very easy at the moment. The legal market has gone crazy, particularly um, in and around London. The, the US firms have, have shifted the market and it's quite easy to get blown away by the NQ salaries that are on offer at some of, of the US firms, particularly at the moment. Um, but I think when you're looking at firms as well, look at um what 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 they what they want what's 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 their values what do they want for that because um well, speak to lawyers that are there what what's what's their chargeable hour target um how how much of your life do you have to sign away um and and understand a bit about that um and you can get the best way of getting to know um firms like that because ultimately our websites are there to to sell us um, so they, they will depict the firms in the, in the best light, but the best way of actually getting to know the firm is to, as Zoe says, go to different events, speak to different people, speak to um, people at your universities who may have a, experienced a vacation scheme at that law firm the year before, or, um, um, whether successful or not. What did they? How did they find it? Um, and and you'll build up a network of people that you meet at these different events um, and, and use that network. Um, and just try and, as much as you can, um, find out exactly what that firm's like. And there's there's Roll on Friday. You can find lots of information on, on Roll on Friday about the different law firms. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think um, don't always just go to the conventional and, and, and do a bit of, of research. Yeah. Fab. Thank you. Well, I think that neatly brings us up to time, actually. Um, which is excellent news. Um, so a huge thank you to Rav, Octavia and Alex um, for speaking so openly about their experiences um, with the firm and also um, you know, prior to OC. Um, and thank you everybody for listening to us today. Um, if you do have any questions about anything, please do get in touch. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have, um, but best of luck and thanks again for listening to us this afternoon.